On this episode of Automotive Garage, we tear into Troy's rear end. Wait, that didn't sound right, did it? Yeah, kind of hurt. No, but really, we're going to tear into Troy's rear end. So, before we tear into Troy's rear end, let me show you all of his parts. <clears throat> got brand new variants from Nitro gear and axle here. We got our whole setup there. New ring gear bolts, pinion seal, pinion nut, all of our shims during our setup. This is a Detroit True Track yep. for the rear end here, because you know Troy, he got to lock that thing up, lock that rear end up, lock it down. <laughs> And then this is this is the whole real reason we're doing all this. We're putting 410 gears in because just like everything else, Troy drove my truck once. And he's like, oh my gosh, your 410 gears are amazing. I have to be just like you. So I got 411. So he got 411 gear. No, they're really 410 gears. So, uh, yeah. Troy's getting ready to pull the axles here. What's the matter? Do you need help? He needs an extension. So we're going to pull the axles. I'm gonna pull the diff cover, get this draining, and then we're gonna get into the nitty gritty of tearing into all this. And I mean, it's, I'm kind of excited about this, but I'm kind of not, just because setting up rear ends, is, it's time consuming. And I don't know what I'm doing, so not well, much help. You, that's it helps that you're here. <laughs> well, everything was going really good, and then we had a damn flat tire. <laughs> <laughs> no, not really. Um, me and Troy both decided that uh, I might be happier when we go to reinstalling if the spare tire wasn't there for me to be bumping my head on and looking around and everything else. So that's coming now. And we just wanted to be safe in case we'd had a flat tire while it was up in there. Hey, Drew, what are you doing? Drain your rear end. <laughs> It's a nice rear end. Watch this. <sighs> Mind blown. Let's just not forget that. Let's not forget they're there. Yeah. Well, if we forget they're there, that means we're going to drive your truck without a disc cover up. <laughs> Cute little tag. It'll be inaccurate now. It's still there from the original owner taking good care of it. Yes. What was oh, that? that's sharp when it's Hey, don't do that. Better. We don't have time to go to Mercer today. No, we don't. We got too much to do. Oh, oh. It's, it's weeping. I got a little bit ahead of myself. So. I was supposed to say you're going to put one on the top. Or? No, I was just, just going to town. <laughs> Went to town. I like it when I remember stuff that you don't because I don't know much, so I'm kind of a, you know. Whoa! Hey, put that right there. I thought it was gonna be stuck a little more than that still, <laughs> but it wasn't. Damn it. We got sawdust. I like starting the day off with a mess. So. <laughs> hey, hey, listen, you know what? Have the... you changed this since I changed it? No. That's still pretty damn clean. Well, we're gonna go to a commercial break real quick. While we clean up this mess on the floor. I love the way gear oh, all smells. Man, that there. smells like total butthole. <laughs> well, we're all working on your rear end. <laughs> Blast it and powder coat it black. You can put an automatic garage sticker right here on your rear end. You could. Hey, have Tiny make us a, a one out of metal. Yeah. All right. All right. There's the gears we're taking out. Yeah, we got somebody we think is going to buy them. So I can recoup a little bit of my money. Recoup? Yeah. I can recoup over nothing. Oh, I'm using my puller on Troy's rear end. <laughs> you might actually pull very easily. I was. Yeah. My rear ends loose. Yep. Thank you. That's how you pull your yoke off. <laughs> well, 
axle. How they look? The seals. I mean, the axle, everything doesn't eat up. Or... You can't see the seal, but if we're going to change your rear end off, we have time that day before we go to BTS. We'll just do those then. Okay. Because we're going to be draining the oil anyway. Yeah. And yours are definitely not leaking right now at all. Okay. We probably should have pulled your tires off because I got the oil on the middle of your wheel now. I don't worry about it. I'm sorry. You didn't let me down. Well, Gary would have said I know. Yeah, well. Let's do that. Now oh. Gary would have left before you did this because he has stuff to do. I got, I got stuff to do. I'm the grinder. Why ain't my truck fixed? Oh, I can't show up. Still or get the parts. Still sitting there. Nice looking set of gears to sell somebody. Still got paint on the factory. Yeah. I think that's probably about free enough for getting it apart. We'll do it more. All right. All right, so doesn't everybody do this, but these are made from the factory. They've worn in certain spots with this rear end, so I like to index them for the top and the left and the right to make sure that they go back in the exact same spots they were in. So I'm just going to put me a dimple top, top, and then we'll do a dot right here just for the right one. So I'm going to do a dot. I can see that. So tops, and the one with the dot in the middle is the right. And then they'll go back in the exact same spots they were in. I was watching some more of that uh, guy whistling Dixie, or not whistling Dixie, wh whistling Diesel. Yeah. He bought a General Lee. Oh God, he's not gonna tear it up, is he? I don't know. It was a few months ago and he let his dad drive it and everybody's saying he should give it to his dad because the dad was really happy about him buying it. And I haven't had time to watch anything after that. We got one big old fat shim here. I can't see this side now. Let me put the camera down and help you. It shouldn't just fall out. I got pressure in on it. Take some pictures of the shit or oh. sure. All right, well, so I see a shim and a shim. We just need to make note of which one's on which side. Oh shit. Ah. That's heavy. There is no getting a pinion seal out without having to destroy it. I don't think that I ever put one in. If I did, I sure don't remember it. That was a good seal. I sure hate I had to tear it up. All right, we're gonna use these, I believe, for setting up our new rear end. Look at there, there's a shim right there. Let's knock out some brazen.
Yes, we The top's uh, closer to coming out than the bottom. There was no shim here neither. Nope, no shim. Ford just made a perfect rear end with it. So. Uh, you know. When you're good, you're good, right? That's right. I say we clean all this up and have that done. All right. Uh, we got to have this tone ring. This is for your speedometer pickup right here. Uh, so we got to get that off to put on the new Detroit locker. So we're gonna pull this off, get the tongue ring on, just put these back in, just with the impact, not worry about it, so somebody else can buy it and do, do what they want with it. Smoking. We need a piece of wood. <laughs> a piece of wood? <laughs> Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. There you go. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you're being accosted. That's my, it. my finger wasn't under there. That would get it. I wonder if the glove taps are gonna do anything. Where's that tying at? Yeah. I just saw it. What tone do you think this ring makes? <laughs> We're good. That was real nice. Now, my next question is, is what does this look like on the uh, tree The other ring? one? We can go look at it. Well, hopefully it's not some crazy thing where you're like, oh, you don't need a speedometer with a tree track. <laughs> it's that good. Dependable than Gary. Well, I'm also not as fat as Gary. <laughs> this is true. He's probably eating lunch somewhere. Oh boy. Yeah. It's clean. It's big. It's Thank you. Adventurous. <laughs> I don't really want to put that on uh, I want a, what I want is a Detroit locker. Okay, you want this yet? No. We're not ready for that. Oh, this ain't a Detroit locker. Oh god. It's heavy. I hope you didn't break it further. Look at that thing. That's shiny. Yeah. Oh, 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 yeah.
what she said. And it's code. What's that? Troy? Detroit True Track. Luminous slip, locker, whatever you want to call it. Oh man. Will you look at that? Like a glove. Mm. This is hotter than I thought it would be from just sitting out there on that. Wow. Hey, what's wrong with it, Drew? It's hot. And I that's from somewhere we had it sitting out there. Just on top of that old side by side black roof. Black roof there. You can see the other bearings. It is also like 95 degrees today, 94 degrees. Imagine if you didn't have the best jack puller ever. My right hand is pretty good. So you want to tell him what we did to make this easier? This has been in the freezer for over an hour. And these have been out in the sun on a hot black piece of a side-by-side -side roof for, I don't know, the same amount of time. So no, it's not put it in the oven, but you do have a pretty good differentiation of the two temperatures. Keep going, Tim. One more, probably. There it goes. Just, just give it a tiny bump. Mm -hmm. All right, we're on there. How much of a closer has this been, Drew? Oh, it's been great. We had to find something to put on the bearing to press it in. And you have that popped apart. Your camera's easy. Effed. Go, go slow, Tim. <sighs> One more. Is, is it just up in there? Did it feel all right? Give it a little pump. Uh, yeah, it's a lot of resistance here. All right, let's let's put. Oh man, oh, mess backwards. <laughs> <laughs> man, this feels so good. I could hit Tim in the nuts with it. Okay. <laughs> Troy, what you got in your cooler? I'd never leave home without my cold differential. Nope, me neither. Uh, you act like that's heavy. How's that? You're so stupid. <laughs> what are we what are we installing here? Troy? Troy, help me out. Pinion gear. Gear? Pinion. Race. Let's, how about pinion? Out, out of race. How about you Pretty clean, Drew. We'll have to grind it down a little bit. <laughs> uh, we picked this guy up at the homeless shelter. <laughs> we bought him a beer. We're gonna get him a haircut later <laughs> after he gets done helping us. <laughs> We're extra proud of our Japanese bearings, so we always make sure we line that word Japan up right there in this here groove so you can clearly read Japan. This uh bearing race right here, we machined it a little bit ourselves on the bench grinder and use that flap wheel and what this is is for fitment so if we have to shim the pinion instead of having to beat the nice new race out it's the same thickness as the new one and the bearing fits the same as far as setting the rear end up and getting everything really close without sitting there having to beat it out every time it now just slides in by hand it still fits right but it slides in by hand so we don't have to beat it in and out so then if we 
have to change the shim, we're just gonna loosen the pinion up. We'll use a new crush loop. We'll slide this out. We'll add our shim to here if we need to, or remove a shim if we need to. Put this back in, test fit again. And then once it's all right, we can take it out, drive the new one in with this, whatever shim we found worked right, and we'll be good to go. So that's how we're gonna do that. I like it. What you doing, Drew? Getting a little bit of oil on these bearings so everything will be reading right. If they're not lubed up, they're not gonna give you a good reading on all this stuff. While we're sitting here seeing what we gotta do. All right, Troy had to leave and all red to go get some uh, more crush sleeves because the ones that we had were wrong. So we have the one crush sleeve to set this up with, which we had our fitment bearing in there right now so this has got to come back apart so this is all for setup purposes and we did that in case we had to add a shim to the pinion uh i've got like seven thousandths right now of backlash and i was getting ready to paint my gears and see uh i'm probably gonna have to go add another small shim to this but i'm gonna see what kind of pattern we're starting with right now um we actually have the factory spacer stuck in here and then we're using the spacers that came with the setup here and i believe this is uh 0.256 inches is what i have over here right now which has got me really close so i'm going to paint it and see what my pattern is on my teeth right now with my backlash being pretty good and uh we'll go from there and what we'll probably do to tighten this up if if i feel like i need to tighten up the carrier bearing preload is we're going to add the same size thin spacer to both sides to just add a little more preload to it so that it won't change our backlash if our gear mesh looks good here so we're gonna go from there. All right, so what we have here is heel contact. You can see, I think our depth is actually pretty good, but our contact is out here on the heel of the gear. We're wanting to move it this way. So what we have to do is tighten up the ring gear to the pinion this way. So I felt like this needs to be a little more preload on the carrier. So we're gonna add some spacers to this side, tighten it back down and, and relook at everything. All right, we're back today. We've got it all set up, perfect backlash. What was it, Anthony, 6,000? 6, right there at the, the bottom end, perfect. That's our wear pattern. I'm not super happy with this. It's too far out here on the heel. I wanna move it down further towards the toe. I'm happy with the depth. So we're at the point now, I got one crush sleeve left. We got a uh, shim in the pinion now that I put in before we did this pattern today. And I'm gonna triple it, I think, which is gonna move this down towards the toe. And then we'll have to see if we have to readjust <clears throat> our backlash or our, pre or our preload here is gonna be perfect. We did all the math here on getting that figured out. And we have what, maybe a thousand? Less than. We have less than a thousand of setting the dial indicator gauge up here and with the pry bar pushing less than a thousandth of been able to move this back and forth, which is great. It means the bearing's got plenty of pressure on them. So we're gonna take this apart, last crush sleeve, change the shim, and then double check all this again and go from there. This is what it takes is figuring all the science out of what you got and doing math, which I have my mathematician here today. <laughs> Not 
dot goes to the top. Yeah. So we have a, I don't have a four on my side. I didn't realize that when I took it apart. I wouldn't have made any difference. Impact. Bound up. We're too close to the pinion though. We could start by just moving every single thin shim we have on this side, leave the one thick one for that side and see what happens. I guess let's see what we got for background for that. Three, that's what you're guessing? Check our pattern, or should we try to tighten that up? Where do you think? If we move that thin as shimless, do we have a 25 in there? All right, there's our wear pattern now. After changing the pinion and moving the shims on the carrier, we got our wear right in the middle of the tooth there. Before, like y'all saw, the wear was up here and almost coming to the edge of the tooth, so we had high contact. So now we have six thousandths of uh back play here and the carrier's got one thousandth of movement with using a pry bar back and forth which should be great uh pinions all put in with loctite on the nut only thing we have left to do is we have to torque our ring gear all the way down i'm going to remove one at a time use the paint to mark it and uh, torque them down to spec
All right, guys, we got her all together. Axles tore down. We filled it up with our 85 140 non synthetic oil that you have to use with this Eaton locker that we put in here. Um, we're going to take her for a spin, see what happens, see how she sounds. Uh, I'm happy with what the backlight was set at and everything else, so we're going to find out here in a second. It's supposed to stay below 50 miles an hour for X amount of miles. Troy knows uh, how many miles it is, but I'm just going to give it a run, make it around the block, see how she sounds. All right, guys, so gear sound good, no noise. I actually ran it up to 70. Don't tell Troy a time or two to see if I had any gear noise. I just had to see through it in neutral going down a hill. No gear noise at all, nice and smooth. Super happy with it. Uh, truck's got some more pickup with the 410s in it. Real nice, I think he'll be happy with it. It's a shame he wasn't here to help Troy. Anyways, Automatic Garage signing out. Y'all like, subscribe, comment, check us out at Facebook, check us out at automaticgarage.com. The reason we did these gears is because we're getting ready to head over to BTS. So look for that video coming after this one, going over to BTS transmission in Lead Hill, Arkansas. We get a, a super bad transmission put in this truck. So we'll holler at y'all later. It's Automatic Garage signing out. Mm -hmm.